Shalom Gimel page to help us now share the Hashem talk with us. Uh, Shalom to the whole collect out there. This would be considered a continuation of the debate between uh, Patrick Zarak and Mike Holloway. Uh, what is uh, salvation and who is it for? So this would be a part two. Let's see where the spirit takes me on this one. So I'm right here at one minute, uh, one hour and one minute in of uh, this particular video that you're seeing right here. So let's let it play. There, chapter number 60, verse number three. Nations will come to your light. Light is another synonym, synonym for salvation. Just as the scripture says that we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Darkness would represent those who are lost, and those brought into the light would represent those that would inhabit the salvation of God. And notice, Israel, they were supposed to bring the nations into the light of God, and kings to the brightness of your rising. But Israel... Well, how can Israel do that when they were lost themselves? You should use the word lost. Let's go real quick to Matthew uh, Matthew 10 Let's start from the first verse he goes he names the 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 12 a name so it said, matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Let me go to the red letter edition. Clear verse. These 12, these 12, Yahawashai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go, that's this is the Great Commission. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't deal with the Gentiles. It's talking about the actual Gentiles, other nations, and into any city of the Samaritans. And to ye not. Now, the reason why he separated Samaritans from Gentiles, they're Gentiles too, was because these particular Gentiles, they were following the laws and the statutes of the Most High. And they were telling themselves that they were the actual descendants of uh, Jacob, which they were not. Go back and read uh, Second uh, Kings 7 to 17 chapter, around about the 20th verse. You can read the whole chapter, but the key point starts at around the 20 some odd verse. So it says, uh, but go rather to the what? To the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So as the pastor Mike said, or Holloway said, that, that the Israelites are supposed to bring the uh, nations into the light. No, wasn't talking about that. They were lost. The most high, the Yahweh Shai, our Lord, had to get the, the 12 to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he he um excluded the Gentiles and the Samaritans which were Gentiles. So he, I read, it, read it for yourself. He said, don't deal with the Gentiles. Don't deal with the Samaritans. But go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel because they're lost. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he, he addresses Israel. So everything he says after that is, is for Israel. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Heal the sick of Israel, cleanse the leopards of Israel, raise the dead of Israel, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. To who? To Israel. So let's, uh, oh, let me do this. Let's go to Isaiah 60 since he mentioned it.
Right, arise, shine, for thy light is come. Come upon who? Israelites. And the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. It says, let me read the second verse. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. And that's talking about Israelites. That's why Israelites, that's why um, our Lord told the disciples in Matthew 10, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, but but Yahweh shall uh, rise upon thee, the Israelites, and, as, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now that's talking about Israelites as as well. Because you when when um, the apostle Paul went to the Gentiles, he was going he was going to who? He was going to the Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites. That's why he had a big problem with uh, let's use for example the church of Corinth. Because their ways were the ways of the Greeks, of the Hellenists. That's why the young men and even some of the old men, they had long hair, they had long braided hair and so forth. As he said, you're not supposed to have a long hair, you're a man. Uh, adultery was going on. That's in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So, so they were in, as we say, a Gentile state of mind. So as you read down, it tells you how these nations are going to serve, um, minister unto us, meaning be servants unto us. But I'm just showing you, it, it was always in the text that the Gentiles were to come to salvation. And then here comes Jesus saying, those Gentiles were Israelites. When you go to Isaiah chapter 14, it says the strangers shall cleave unto them. Those are also Israelites. I am the light. Again, another synonym for the salvation. It brings people out of darkness. I am the light. Who is in darkness? Israelite. That's why he said lost. That's why he said lost. If you're lost, you're blind to where you're going. Of the world, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isaiah chapter 42, verse number six. He says, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. That's talking about the Israelites. That's talking about the Israelites. And I will appoint you, Israelites, as a covenant to the people. And what else? A light salvation to the world. right because ultimately, when the let's go back to Matthew's 10, then he called them lost. How can they bring nations to the light when they were lost? They had to give be given the light first. So, when the 12 were gathered in the book of Acts, mainly Paul, who was they taught? Who were they talking to? They were talking to the Israelites. If you go to Acts the chapter, uh, the the thirteen chapter. It speaks about how the uh, Jews envied the fact that the Gentiles were listening to the gospel. Well, those weren't Gentiles; those were Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites coming back into the fold. Let's listen to that again. You in righteousness, I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you, Israelites, as a covenant to the people. And what else? A light, salvation to the nations. Again. Exactly. Because what does it say in Isaiah? Uh, what is that? Isaiah 2 and uh, 2. And also, um, I believe that's Micah 4 and 2. That's what that means. Let's go to that. Isaiah Two, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that 
the mountain of the Lord's house, which are the Israelites, shall be established in the tops of the mountains, that's the kingdom, and shall be exalted above the hills, the other nations, and all nations shall what? Flow into it. Flow into who? They're going to flow unto the Israelites because we're going to become priests. So the first thing that has to be gathered are the Israelites. And then the kingdom would have to come because ultimately the nations will be under us and they will learn the Lord. So you just said it, that the, that, that the, that the Lord set Israel up as a light to the Gentiles. So if you want to go that way, exactly, that's the fulfillment of Isaiah 2, verse 2. It says, and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of, the, of Yahweh, to the house of the power, the God of Jacob. And he, the Israelite men, which will be priests, the kingdom of priests, shall teach us of his ways, the most highest ways, to who, who are going to be the teachers, the Israelites. And we will walk in his path, path and out of Zion shall go forth the law uh, and the word of the Yahweh from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their plows, these are the other nations, into plowshares and their spears and the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war no more. So that kills that nonsense with the uh, the JJs, because they've been over there for 70 years. There's still wars going on around the world. Old house, but it got to start at, it's got to start with Israel being gathered. When are they going to be gathered and put in order when the kingdom comes? Old house of Jacob, which is Israel, come ye and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they because they be uh, replenished from the east and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers, in the children of strangers. Let's look up the word strangers. The word is nakar ya, which are the actual other nation. You're following the other nations. So you're right. Ultimately, Israel will give the law, statutes, and commandments in order will come from the Israelites because all the tribes will become priests, not just the tribe of Levi. Because it would consist of Levi and the other and the rest of the tribes, and we're going to teach the nations. But but first of all, the uh, Israelites have to be brought together. That's why, that's why um, the Lord said what He said: Go, don't deal with the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles. Don't deal with the Samaritans, which are Gentiles, but go rather to the Lord sheep and house of Israel. So they have to get in order first. When when will the whole nation of Israel get in order? When the kingdom comes. The Lord is only going to save the elect that are Israelites. Um, and uh, the rest of Israel, if they're here in America, they're going to be destroyed. Because this is Babylon the Great. This is going to be the Lake of Fire, which is Babylon the Great. This is the U.S. Then you're going to have Israelites that are scattered throughout the world. Then there's going to be a great sifting. You can have Israelites. That's what the great multitude is all about in uh, uh, Revelation 7 and 9. You're going to have Israelites looking like Moabites. You're going to have Israelites looking like Ammonites. You're going to have Israelites looking like uh, uh, Elamites, Edomites, Moabites, Ammonites, like I said. So let's come back here. In that light bringing them out of darkness into the glory of God. And it first starts with Israel. And when the kingdom is established, then the other nations are going to get it. 
they're going to buck up against it. The Ishmaelites, the various Arabs, they're going to say, no, we believe in Allah. So you're going to have to beat them down for them to finally say, there's no Allah. There's only one God. Here, Israel failed, but it was God's intention that they would bring the nations into God's life. Psalm 67, verse 1. God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah, verse 2. Now, this verse is so explicit it can't be gotten around. That your way may be known on earth, your salvation among the nations. Your salvation among the nations are going to be the elect being um, sifted out among the nations because we're scattered. Remember, the Israelites are scattered throughout the whole planet. It starts with Israel first. They're going to be on top. Then the nations are going to be under us and we're going to teach them the laws. At first, they're going to buck up against it. We're going to bust much ass and kill a lot of people. Then they're going to realize we're going to have spiritual power. There's going to be a glow about us. And then they're going to realize, look, we can't um, We can't defeat these people. You know the old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. Well, they're going to join us. Let's listen to some, some more. I don't know what else to say. Oh, let the nations be glad. What are you glad for? But because of the previous verse that tells them that their salvation has come among them. And now the nations can be glad, sing for joy, for thou shalt. They're not going to sing for joy. They're not going to sing for joy because they're going be, to gonna be slaves. Let's go back to Isaiah. Uh, let me see. Okay, Isaiah 60. I want to try, try to hit some points. This the six verses talking about the sons, at least two of the sons of Ishmael, they're going to serve, they're going to minister unto us. That's right in the seventh verse, I'm sorry. Well, here it is. Here it is. I read it earlier. I, uh, the tenth verse. And the sons of strangers. Now I guarantee you that word there. Let's see what that word there is. The sons of strangers. Uh, Nakar, which means the other nations. It was talking about Israelite strangers that lived in other lands. The word there would be um, Gar. Now, sometimes you come across the word Nakar, and it is talking about Israel, so you got to read it in context. It says, and the sons of strangers, the other nations, shall what? Build up thy walls. Because we're not going to do anything. We're going to give our orders. And their kings, the, the nation's kings, shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, the Israelites. But in my favor, for who for Israelites, have I had mercy on thee? Let's look up the word minister. I think I looked it up in the last video. Minister to it means to do, do do services for you. Therefore, the gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, except for the Sabbath, uh, that men that men may bring unto thee the what the forces of the of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. So let's look up the word forces. We may look up the word Gentiles. Forces. And the word there is uh, Chayal. Strength, might, efficiency, wealth, army, strength, ability, efficiency, wealth, force, army. Strength, might, 
efficiency because they're going to work for us. Wealth, their wealth. Army, because there ain't going to be no need for no army because there's not going to be any wars. Strength, because they're going to have to pick things up, build walls, chop down trees. They're going to have to, uh, they're going to have to um, uh, uh, reap. I'm sorry, sow. And I'm going to read that in um, Isaiah 61. Ability, skills, efficiency, wealth. So we're going to take what they got. See right here, it says riches. It says uh, wealth. So we're going to take what they have. 11 verse, therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Whose gates? Israel's gates, the Most High's gates. They shall not be shut day nor night except for the Sabbath because there's not going to be any, any type of uh, work done on the Sabbath that men, meaning the other nations, may bring unto thee, the Israelites, the forces of the Gentile, their, their forces, their, their riches, and that their their kings may be brought. What are their kings going to do? It says, for the nation and kingdom that shall not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So what are they going to do? They don't want to be wasted, so they're going to do what we tell them to do. Serve is short for a servant. Let me bring out some more. Fourteen verse. The sons also of them that afflicted thee, past ten, shall come bending unto thee. And that's what the word blessing means. When you look up the word blessing, the word is barak. When you, when you go into the definition of a blessing or barak, that's when somebody bows down to you. And all they that despised past ten, who's the last nation that fully despised us? The white man, because we're under, we're under his power. Oh, I got to get Jeremiah, Jeremiah thirteen sixteen. And all them that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. So when is that going to happen in the kingdom of heaven? And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion, or the monument of the Holy One of Israel. So what is that relationship? That of a master and a slave. That of a master and a slave. That of a master and a slave. The only thing that they're going to get that's good is they're going to learn the law, statutes, and commandments, and they're going to honor the most high. And then they're going to do what we tell them to do. And Isaiah chapter 60 is not, has not yet happened because Israel is not in power. It says, whereas thou has been forsaken and hated, that's talking about us, so that no man went through thee. Well, we ain't want to deal with y'all. I will make thee an eternal excellency a joy of many ge generations. Who is Isaiah talking about? He's talking about the Israelites. They're going to be high and exalted. Thou shalt also suck the milk, milk of the Gentiles. What does that mean? That means their resources. And shalt suck the breast of kings. We're not going to literally do that. That's talking about their resources. And thou shalt know that I, Yahweh, am thy savior. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the Israelites. And thy redeemer to buy you back the mighty one of Jacob, which is another uh, Israel and Jacob uh, interchangeable. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, 
and for wood, brass, and for stone, iron. I will also make thy officers, the Israelite men, peace, and thine exactors righteousness. I'm not reading the whole thing. A little one shall become a thousand. What does that mean? That means we're going to have a lot of women and we're going to have a lot of sex in the kingdom, which is going to be on earth. And we're going to produce a lot. Every time we have sex, that woman going to get pregnant. So when your woman is pregnant, you're going to deal with the next woman. If, if you have a woman that's on a period, for a week, you're going to deal with the next woman. So some of us is going to have a thousand wives. Some of us are going to have 10,000 wives. Some of us, well, I'll say all of us, we're going to have concubines too. And if we have children without our concubines, they're going to be Israelites. Those offsprings are going to be Israelites because you, you are based on what your father is, based upon the seed. A little one, meaning an insignificant man in Israel, shall become a thousand. He's going to produce a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. And Yahweh will hasten it in his time. What's, when is that going to happen? In the kingdom. Let me, let me do this. And see, if uh, this guy, Elder Mike, doesn't come out of that madness, he's going to do two things. He's going to take the Karagma, and the Most High is going to destroy him. Then he's just going to have to come back as a newborn baby. When he come back as a newborn baby, he's not going to be yapping. And, what about the Gentiles? He's going he gonna to start all over again. As Han said, like a baby being born, knowing only life. So that's what that's what uh, uh, Elder Mike gonna be. All he's gonna know is life. He's gonna cry. You know, his mother's gonna give him the the breast, and he's gonna grow up. And then when he grows up, when he's twelve years old, he's gonna come up under the uh, the covenant. That's what bar mith bar misbah means, a son of the cover son of the covenant. To come up when you're twelve, you come up under the law. So if you're 13, 14 years old, you commit, a, commit, commit adultery with another woman, guess what? You're going to be put to death. Okay, so let me click on this. Okay, let's go to Cambridge. A little one, a small one, or better perhaps the least Right, the least, the least person, the smallest, an insignificant Israelite is going to be a great man. The word for thousand means also a large or smaller group of families, clan, or tribe. This is doubtless the sense in, in which it is employed here or was that whatever that is? Comp, a comp. The I don't know what the abbreviation is. Somebody help me out. The parallel nation in the next line. Who hasten in its time? The fulfillment shall be instantaneous when when once the appointed time has arrived. That's the kingdom of heaven. The reference is to the whole of the preceding prophecy. So when is when will Isaiah chapter 60 come to pass? It will come to pass in the future. And then no, ain't no scholar, no scholar that's worth his, his, his salt is going to say, oh, that happened, such and such and so on. No, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Now let's go from here to, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to Isaiah Isaiah 49. 
So, you know, Pastor Mike came around to the the uh the one Westers, then he had the, the uh debate with uh Captain Desario. And here I am doing a video. And feel free, you know, I watched the video that uh Apostle Ron Lobb did. And he said, well, I'm waiting to see what the hard one does. I said, well, don't wait for me. If you want to do a commentary, you do your own commentary. You do your own commentary if you want. You don't have to wait for me. You're, you know, you're saying it out of respect. Well, look, I'm going to let him. He said he might do a part two. So I'm going to let him do it so I can do. No, you can go ahead and do your thing if you want to. <laughs> That's if you want to. So now I don't want to, let me see, salvation reaches to the end of the earth. Right, because Israel is scattered to the end of the earth. Uh, the deliverance of the elect, Matthew 24, that's only going to be Israelites. The only ones that's going to be delivered delivered in, in that ship, the, the father ship, the Yahushai ship, is going to be our, only our, of the elect only. Okay, promise to Zion. Zion is Israel, another name for Israel. Bear me for a minute. Let me do it this way, this way. I mean, you can really read the whole, let me try this. Uh, does say if you how the most high behold I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people and they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders so we know that this is talking about the other nations they're going to be slaves and kings and kings which are of the nation other nations shall they're not going to be in a kingly state in the kingdom and kings or former kings shall be thy nursing fathers. They're going to take care of your kids. And their kings, former, former queens, thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth. When is, it going to, when is this going to happen, happen uh, Elder Mike? It's, it's going to happen in the future. It's not even, it, it has not taken place. When is this? When is Isaiah 49, 23 going to take place in the kingdom of heaven? To thee with their face, face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh for they shall not be ashamed. The Israelites shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Who's, what group of Israelites are, are waiting, waiting for uh, the Lord? The elect. So it's going to start with the elect. Let me go to another one. Let me give you another one. Isaiah 45. See, this is why it doesn't make me any sense to have debates with these guys. Because they want to see, like, uh, Pastor Mike or Elder Mike, whatever, you know. He kept bringing out scriptures about the Gentiles, but he doesn't understand. The, uh, based upon the scriptures that you went to, sometimes it's talking about Israelites and the Gentile state of mind, as we use that term. And sometimes it's talking about the actual Gentiles. So you have to know the difference. Start at 13 verse. I have raised up, raised him up in righteousness, the Israelites. I will direct all his ways, Israelites. He shall build my city and he shall let my captives go, not for price nor reward. We are the captives, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, the labor of Egypt, which are the Egyptians, Cushites, and merchandise of Ethiopia, the Cushites, well, Egypt is uh, Mizraim, 
this is Cush, and of the Sabians, men of stature shall come over unto thee, the Israelites, and they shall be thine. We're going to own them. They shall come after thee in chains. They're going to be chained up. They shall come over and they shall fall down. We, did we read that in Isaiah 49? Lick the dust, bow down with their faces toward the earth, kiss the dust of our feet. When is, that, when is Isaiah 49 going to take place? It's getting ready to take place. When is Isaiah 60 going to take place? It's getting ready to take place. When is Isaiah 45 going to take place? It's getting ready to take place. This is going to happen when the kingdom is established. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, surely the, your power is in thee, and there is none else. There is no power. Let me look up the word supplication in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew. Pastor Mike, you better come out of that nonsense because you're going to get caught out there. You're going to get, but you know what? If you're one of the elect, you're going to come out of it anyway. If you're not one of the elect, you're going to stay in this madness. You're going to take the karagma and um, you're going to die. And then you're going to just have to come back. And then you teach that there's a hell. There's no, the, the hell, hell is the grave. That's when they put, that's what they did when they, when your grandma mama died. When my grandmother died or grandfather, or uncle, or whatever. So the word there is uh, supplication. It says, intervene, inter interpose, to mediate, judge, to intercede, to pray. Bear with me for a minute. Anyway, let's come back, come back over here. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. And this is what our Lord read when he opened the Torah, the, uh, the law, the Torah, the Tanakh, rather. He read out of, out of Isaiah 61. And he said, today this prophecy has been fulfilled. This is talking about the, that, this is talking about our Lord. So if this is going to be fulfilled, shouldn't the rest of Isaiah 61 be fulfilled? Fourth verse, and they shall build the old waste cities. Who shall build the old waste cities? The other nations. We read that in Isaiah 60. They shall, it says, they shall build thy walls. They shall rise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And strangers, now the word there should be, let's see what's there. The word there is oh, it is a different word here. Strangers. Zawar 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 to become a strange, strange foreigner, enemy, enemy. So those uh, strangers are the other nations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and wine dressers. Now, when you look up this word plowman, Uh, 
plowman. Isaiah 61 is yet to happen. Isaiah 61 will come to pass in the kingdom. So somebody's going to play the part of a servant. Now, now what does it say? The word there is a car. Plowman, husbandman, farmer, working the land, yet not owning any of it. Didn't that, did, does that, does something come to mind? The movie uh, 12 Years a Slave. And if you saw that movie, the, the uh, main character, uh, Solomon Northup, was a free man. He, he played the, the, the violin. And they tricked him. And they put him back in slavery. So he was in slavery for 12 years, born as a free man. They changed, that's not your name, boy. Your name ain't Solomon, your name is whatever, Toby, whatever the, whatever the character was. And that's a true story. He made a statement. He said slavery wasn't all that bad. He said if it wasn't so damn hot. He said that he got to his ass. But he was in slavery for, for 12 years. If you saw, if you didn't see that movie, Elder Mike, Go ahead and watch that movie. He, he was out there working in the field and he didn't reap the benefits of it. All he got was a meal and he, and he slept in a uh, slave quarters. And the, and the master slept in a, uh, in a mansion. And you, wasn't a, and you wasn't a house Negro. You was a field Negro. You worked out there in the field. Then the master, the slave master was having sexual relations with one of the slave women. And then the, and then the, uh, the, the, the wife of the, the slave master would hit her, kick her in the ass and slap her in the face and treat her like shit because she knew that her husband was sleeping with the slave woman and she couldn't do a, nothing about it because guess what? The man is over the woman. And that's what happened with Sarah. So you can get an idea. That's what happened with Sarah and Hagar. That's why she went out in the wilderness. Because she was getting her ass beat. Oh, no. Sarah was just giving her dirty looks. No, Sarah was kicking her in the ass. Beating the shit out of her. And she couldn't do nothing. Because she. what position did she have? She was in the position of a slave. You do not go against your master. And they're going to learn it very well in the kingdom. Because we, you won't get fucked up. We, we, and we're going to be able to read your mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a plowman is a, is a field hand. I mean, I can bring out these precepts all day long. So let's come on back. So you need to, Pastor Mike, you need to get out of that slave mentality of yours. And if you don't, like I said, you're going to be destroyed and then you're going to come back. That's a beautiful thing. You get to come back as a newborn baby. You might come back as Tazariak's son. Zariac going to say, he going to read your spirit. He going to say, this the little nigga I had a debate, debate with back in the world on the other side. But let me raise him up. He my son now. And meanwhile, Vocab Malone will be working out in the, in the field. You better hope you are Israelite, Vocab. So judge the people righteously. Right. Let's move on. There's so many more scriptures, even in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 47. It says, thus, when Israel's getting their inheritance, and this is talking about future inheritance, thus shall you divide this land among yourselves, according to the tribes of Israel. It shall be that you will divide it by lot as an inheritance for yourselves and for the strangers who dwell among you and who bear children among you. 
That's talking about Israelites. That's talking about Israelites. So you mean to tell me we're going to give... Matter of fact, let me bring it back. Did he, did he quote... Is, what did he quote? Ezekiel? Give me a second. Let me hear that again. The world, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isaiah chapter 42, verse number 6. That's us. And cause his face to shine upon us. Church, even in the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 47, it says, thus, when Israel's getting their inheritance. Ezekiel chapter 47. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47. 47. Let me go down to stranger. Now this word stranger, I'm going to go to the root of the word. I'm going to show you that. It's, this is also in um, Isaiah chapter 14 and 1. In Isaiah chapter 14 and 1, when it speaks about the strangers shall cleave unto you, it's talking about Israelites in a Gentile state of mind coming into the fold to other Israelites that are already woken up. That's what that's talking about. Isaiah, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 47 verse 22, and it shall come to pass that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you and to the strangers. We're not going to give these other nations our land. The Most High gives all the scriptures speak about under every vine and every fig tree. Let me let me let me do this. Let me do this. Vine and fig tree. Let's see what comes up. Right. So you call unto, unto your neighbor every under the vine and the fig tree. So your neighbors are the other nations round about. That's all I wanted. Because we're going to place all the nations back in their land. Elam will be in the land of Elam, appointed for Elam. Moab will be in the land of Moab. Ishmael will be in the land of Ishmael. So they're going to know the nations. Oh, those are the Ishmaelites, those are the Moabites. Those are the, you know, the, 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 uh, the Miserimites and so forth. But they're not, the, the nations are not going to be inside of our land. We're going to be inside of our land and we're going to have control over them. That's going to be the headquarters. Palestine, Jerusalem. We're not going to give them some of our land. So it's obvious that that's talking about Israelites. It says in 22nd verse, and it shall come to pass within the kingdom that ye shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you, meaning the Israelites, and to the strangers, the other Israelites, that sojourn among you, which shall beget children among you. What is that talking about? You're going to have Israelites living in different parts of the planet, just like they're living in different parts of the planet now, just like they were living in different parts of the planet back in the, back in the ancient world. And some of them will come to Jerusalem, and they'll stay there for a while. And they'll have children there. And um, they might say, you know what? I want to go back to Israel. So when they say, I want to, I want, I want to plot the land, they're going to have to give you a plot of land. That's what that's talking about. 
uh, that sojourn among you, uh, which shall beget children among you, because they're Israelites, and they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. That's talking about Israelites born outside of the land of Israel. The, the JJs call it the right of return or the right of the stranger. They shall have an inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Why are they going to have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel? Because those strangers are Israelites. Let's read the 23rd verse. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the strangers so what does it mean by what tribe? If he's a Gadite, we're going to go to the land of Gad and we're going to get a plot of land for you. If he's a Benjaminite, we're going to go to, to um, what's it, where they at? Uh, uh, Gilead, I believe. Yeah, Gilead. And they're going to find a plot of land. If you're Judah, that's been living outside of Jerusalem or Palestine for years and they decide to come back, you're going to go to Jerusalem or Bethlehem, or whatever, wherever the tribes were, the tribes are going to get their land back. But we're, that's going to be the headquarters, and we're going to be all over the place. Now, we're not just going to be closed up into our land. We're going to be all over the place. It says, and it shall come to pass, the, the kingdom, that in what tribe the stranger sojourn, there shall ye give him his inheritance, saith the Lord of hosts. So what does it mean by it? How does it make him, how does it make that land of Yasha Allah his inheritance? Because he's one of the tribes. So that word stranger right there does not mean of another nation. Let me show you something. The word stranger, divide uh, inheritance. A uh, stranger. Eight sixteen and sixteen. The word there is gar, gar, which means um, an Israelite. That's called a uh, stranger or sojourn. It's ninety two, ninety two times. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something. It's in Isaiah. I want to go to Isaiah. Isaiah 14 and 1. The word there is, is uh, Gar, which means an Israelite, sojourner. And the strangers shall join with thee, and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. The house of Jacob represents the ones that are already woken up. I'll give you an example. Captain Cesariac was a stranger until he heard the words and he decided to get with the ISUBK. Elder Yashawamba out of Texas, he heard the word, he watched the videos, he saw the various different vi uh, videos, and matter of fact, Elder Yashawamba, if I'm not mistaken, he first started watching, uh, he first got with the IUIC, and then he, then he, then he saw us, and he said, "No, I'm with them. I'm, I'm not gonna. No, I'm with them." So that was a, he was a stranger. And what did he do? He he clev he cleved. What's the past tense of cleave? Cleved to the house of Jacob. So we represent the house of Jacob. So uh, let me see. I'm thinking of some more pieces, but it's going to make this thing. Let's come back. Let's come on back. So you got to understand when you come across scriptures, when it says strangers or heathen. Um, or um, what else? Well, mainly, mainly strangers, heathen and Gentiles. It could be talking about the actual Gentiles or it could be talking about Israelites. You guys are saying, see the word, just see that's talking about other nations. Cornelius, for example. Cornelius was an Israelite, but he was raised up as another nation. In other words, he was following the ways of the Greeks because of his parents. Let 
Let's listen to a little bit more. And this is talking about future inheritance. Thus shall you divide this land among yourselves, according to the tribes of Israel. It shall be that you will divide it by lot as an inheritance for yourselves and for the strangers who dwell. Strangers are Israelite sojourners that live in other lands. Among you and who bear children among you. They shall be to you. We're going to be in the kingdom, right? You're going to be of the tribe of this and you're going to have an Edomite as your next door neighbor having kids. You guys, you 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 Christians don't understand these, these, these scriptures. You don't understand these scriptures, man. This is why we don't like to debate with you because you don't understand the scriptures. You as native born among the children of Israel. What does it mean to be a native born? See, a person who's born in the nation has all the rights and the privileges and the blessings of any person in the nation. So they shall be to you as a native born. In other words, and guess what? The Israelites born outside of the nation still have the same privileges because they can say, I want to live in Israel now. So what they have to do, they go before the judges, they find a plot of land. What tribe you from? Tribe of Ephraim. They got to go to Samaria. They're going to get a plot of land and they're going to say, this is your land. And you don't got to pay nothing for it. Don't treat them any different than anyone else. They shall, listen, all these strangers, they shall have an inheritance with you. This guy clearly doesn't understand the scriptures. He clearly doesn't. And like I said, if he doesn't get out of that madness, if he does not get out of that madness, the Most High is going to destroy him. And he's not going to tell you he's an Israelite. You know, he'll say who the Israelites are? Them people over there in the land of Israel, them pasty people. So he just, he's just a, he's just a, I don't know what, what school he went to, but he's, he's dead wrong, man. Like I said, I'm going to say it again. It's a waste of time arguing with these Christians because they, they're not on the same page as you. So No, so he, it's a Gentiles. No, it says heathen. Among the tribes of Israel. I don't deny. There's a several. Listen, you can read thousands of scriptures to talk about the salvation of Israel. You won't get a peep out of me, right? God is going to save Israel, but he's not only saving Israel. This is clear. He ain't going to save the other nations to be our slaves. I read scriptures. I read Isaiah 60, Isaiah 45, Isaiah 61. Uh, what, what else? Isaiah 49. And I can bring out more scriptures on that. These Gentiles, these strangers will inherit the blessing right along with Israel. Verse 23. And it's Is this nigga out of his fucking mind? You're going to be in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to have an Edomite living next to you. And you're going to have a Moabite living next to you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is this is this is madness shall be that in whatever tribe the stranger dwells, there you shall give him his inheritance. We're talking about the land, y'all. This old famous, precious land that my Israelite friend... Now, you know what? Now, you know what? Go, you know what you do? Let the Israel... Go to Israel and tell tell them, them small hats over there to fu stop fucking with them, uh, my, the, Mona, the Mona Israelites over there. Tell them they can live wherever the fuck they want to live. You ain't going to do that. You ain't going to do that. And I see you not making it, man. I don't see you as being one of the elect. And, and another thing, you're an old wine bottle. What does the scripture say about an old wine bottle? You better hope like hell you're one of the elect. Because if you're not, you're going to take the karagma, which you don't even know about that. You're going to take the, 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 the uh, Revelation 13 and 16, which Captain Desariac is not even up on, man. And then you're going to die. And, uh, you know, so cling to, right? Isaiah chapter number two. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. All the nations shall flow in. Yeah, they're going to, they're going to, we're going to be the new heads. So you got to come to us.
And why do you have to come to us? So we can teach you the laws while you're out there working in the field. We're going to tell you other nations, okay, the sun's going down, it's Sabbath, you can rest. You can drop all that the farming tools and you can rest. You ain't going to get invited to my castle. Okay, come on, we're going to have a party. Come on, y'all. Come on, your slaves. No, you're going to be sleeping in your slave quarters on the ditch some goddamn where, on the pit some goddamn where. Nigga, you've been in America too goddamn long. That's a topic right there. Here, said a mountain of the Lord. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. What's one of his ways? Salvation. He is the way of salvation. And yeah, the other nations are going to be saved to be our slaves. They're going to be saved to be our slaves. We shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Just gonna keep reading Deuteronomy. While they're working in the fields, read Isaiah 60, read Isaiah 61, read Isaiah 45, and read Isaiah, uh, what was the last one? Isaiah 49. And tell me when, when did that happen? This guy right here, Elder Mike, he's the new punching bag for the Israelites. So if you ever want to get on somebody, you can get on this guy. He's a new punching bag for Israel that doesn't understand the scriptures. And I wouldn't engage in no uh, 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 debate with them because this, this is exactly where it's going. I would just got up. I said, see, you lost it. I said, good, good, good. This is, this is madness. 29 verse number 10 all you stand today before the Lord your God. Now here's Moses talking to Israel just before they go to in Habit the land, and he's telling them about the blessings, he's telling them about the curses. But who's he talking to? He says, All of you who stand today before the Lord, your leaders, and your tribes, and your elders, and your officers, all the men of Israel, your little ones, and your wives, also the stranger who is in your camp. Did any of the strangers make it the original strangers that came? out of Egypt, did they make it to the other side? No. The only ones that made it from Egypt, which is Mizraim, the captivity, into the wilderness for 40 years, the only ones that made it from, from the one end to the other, meaning leaving Egypt, going, going uh, through the Red Sea, actually it was the Gulf of Suez, wasn't the Red Sea, and uh, going into the uh, wilderness of sin. Now, now the wilderness who made it into uh, Jerusalem or Palestine that, that experienced both sides of the water, so to speak? It was only Caleb and Joshua. Everybody else were the sons and daughters of these other, of these other uh, Israelites. And now what, what happened to these, uh, these uh, mixed multitude? I don't know. I know one thing. If they, they're here now, everything is reincarnated, they ain't going to be lifted up in the ship. They're not going to receive salvation. All of them were included. If you join yourself to Israel through circumcision and keeping of the law, you, in essence, became Israel. Let me go to Esther, because this one, I got to get in here before the time. Okay, so you say you, you became Israel. Okay, good. Let me give you another one. Just came to mind. What is that? Ezra. Ezra 4, I believe. This is adversaries hinder the work. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard, um, heard that the children of the captivity build the temple unto Yahweh, the Most High of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel, one of the leaders, and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you, for we seek, these are the other nations, right? For we seek your God. They were, they were, they were looking, they were following your God, our God. As ye do, 
and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of uh, Hazar had done king of Assur, which brought us up hither. Let me do something. Let me do this. I know where it's going to take me. I just want to do it this way. Let's see what it says. Bear me for a minute. You know what I'm gonna have to do? Let me do it this way. Let me do this. I already know where it's going to lead me to, but I just want to. Okay, let me click on this. What did Hazard had them do? Let's see. Let me try it this way. Let's see what happens. Let me try. Let me try this. I'm looking for Samaria. You know what I'm going to do? Let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. Come back. Come on now. Okay, it finally gives it to me. I already know what it what is what was what it meant, but I wanted to kind of do this so you won't say, oh, you just made it up. 
So this is Matthew Henry's concise commentary. Four, one to five, every attempt to revive the religion will stir up the oppression of Satan and of those in whom he works. The adversaries were the Samaritans who had been planted in the land of Israel, Second Kings chapter 17. It was, that's why I said go to Second Kings chapter 17, verse 20 on down. It was plain that they did not mean to unite the worship of the Lord according to his word. Let those who discourage a good work and weaken them that they are employed in, it's uh, deployed in it. See how see whose pattern they follow. So so this comment commenter he mentioned. Uh, second, second Kings 17. So let's go to second Kings 17. Cause they made a statement. We do follow your Lord as you do from the days of King, uh, Esser had done. How do you say his name? And Christians don't know this unless you're a, a scholar. I want to go right to the point. For he rent Israel, meaning the northern kingdom from the house of David, the kingdom of Judah, uh, for the children who walked in sins of Jeroboam. Uh, there, there it is. There it is. Uh, 2 Kings 17, verse 24. Cities of Israel filled with what? Strangers. Those strangers were other nations. As in the king of Assyria, uh, brought men from Babylon and Kusta and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sephiim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So as you read down, there were, there were uh, what is it? Lions. Was it li lions? It's lions. Sent lions among them. The Most High sent lions among them to kill some of them. So they had to go back to the king and said, these, these lions are killing us. We want to leave the land. So as you read down, it said that they had to send one of the priests to teach them the laws so that they can live harmoniously in the land. So when the te temple was being built, these were the same people. These were the same people. Let's come back over here. I mean, I already knew it, but I just wanted to kind of go to the commentary to show you what it was talking about. It says, we, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Hasser Haddon, king of Assyria, which brought us up thither. So that had to be, now Hasser Haddon lived during the time period of the 700 uh, BC, which was the same time as uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Shal Shalomaneser V. Because it started with his father, Shalomaneser IV. Shalomaneser is a title. They had a, they had a Shalomaneser I, II, III, but they all had their own names. So they said, look, we worship your God too. Why do they worship a God? Because lions were eating them up. And they um, had to get a priest, go back and read it. Second Kings 17. Starting around about the 24th verse. And when they started keeping the, the laws, the most I said, okay, I'm going to bring the, the, the lions back. I'm not going to curse you no more. Did that make them Israelites? No. It said, but Zerubbabel and Yashua, Joshua, which Joshua the high priest, the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our power, not your power, but we ourselves together will build unto Yahweh the Most High of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, have commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. So you can read the rest of it. So he said, okay, since we can't uh, since we can't uh, build with you, we're going to, anything that you build up, we're going to break it down. We're going to upset, you know, 
And that's what's happening now with these damn wacky tacky Christians. We're building here and they come, you guys ain't the Israelites and you gotta say, everybody gotta come in. So, so uh, uh, Pastor Mike is acting like a damn heathen and he's an Israelite. I guarantee you, if you ask him what's your nationality, he ain't gonna tell you he's an Israelite. Because right, let me come get back over here. All right, let me come back to this. Let me get ready to close. It's this one is going is really going to put uh, uh, um, some some meat to the bones here. Esther chapter number eight, verse number sixteen. You all know the story of Esther after God delivered Israel with the wicked Haman was trying. Many of the people uh, became Jews. That word means Judaized. They started keeping the laws just like the, the people that lived in Samaria. So they don't get their ass tore up by the lions. They kept the laws. So the same thing in the book of Esther, they kept the laws because they feared the Israelites. That didn't make them Jews. And that didn't mean that they're going to be saved, you know, in this, in this coming destruction trying to destroy them because Mordecai wouldn't bow. After God uh, uh, pummeled uh, Haman's plan, caused him to be hung on his own trap. And Haman and his sons were Edomites. He didn't even know who what an Edomite is. Who might say, oh, the Edomites were done away with. Where's that? See, it's a complete waste of time dealing with these Christians. This is basically entertainment. This is all this is, is entertainment. Um, Cause Israel to be delivered, the king announced a decree, right? That no one could hurt or curse the Jews. Now, watch what happened after God delivered Israel in Esther chapter 8, verse 13, 16. This is going to bless somebody. The Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor. Watch this, verse 17. And in every province and city, wherever the king's command and decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a holiday. Now watch this. Then many people of the land became Jews because the fear of the Jews fell upon them. The word there is Judaized. They became Judaized. They started keeping the laws. Just like the people of Samaria. Samaria. And they got to a point where they said, we are the descendants of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what the woman at the well said. You got certain Israelite groups saying the woman at the well was an Israelite. She wasn't an Israelite. She 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 was one of them people that go that goes back to uh, Second Kings chapter seventeen. These foreigners decided that they wanted to become Jews. How do you do that? Through proselytization, you circumcise, commit to the law, and serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Israel has never, has never turned away people who wanted to come in. As okay, so wait a minute. Why did they turn them away in uh, in uh, es um, Ezra 4? Why did the heads of, of uh, Judah turn them away? They said, no, you can't build with us. We're going to build on our own. So what the hell? And he just said it never. This is for you never. Ezra chapter four. Because you really don't understand the scriptures. As long as they came in and converted, which is why we've got a Canaanite woman named Rahab, even though Deuteronomy chapter number seven. If she's a Canaanite, when she comes back in the reincarnation, if she's here among us in this generation, She's she's gonna she's gonna be destroyed. If she's here in America, she's gonna be destroyed in America. If she's in another land, some uh, ham, the land of ham, then she's gonna go into slavery. It says kill all of them, kill all of them. Don't let your uh, sons take their daughters or your. So if the Lord came for everybody and gave everybody a chance of salvation, especially the Gentiles, why did the Most High? Uh, by the way. What the what the what the, the heavenly Father told the Israelites to do 
He said, just kill all of them. What is that called? That's called genocide. Why did the Lord call for a genocide of a people and he didn't give not one of them? You mean that there was not one righteous that would wake up to this truth? Did they say, do you believe in the Lord? No, they just killed them. Daughter is married their sons. But Rahab comes in, gets married, and now she's in the lineage of David, ultimately in the lineage of Christ through the Matthew. She ain't in the fucking, she ain't in no lineage of David, man. You're not in the lineage of, of, of any man if you're a woman. You have an Israelite woman that gets and marries an Edomite man. The children that come out of her are what? Are Edomites. But they look like black people. Look, my, look like my uncle. Yeah, but guess what? They're Edomites. They're tears. Anyway, so we're in uh, one hour, eight minutes in. Uh, this video right here, and I'm going to close it. Shalom.